indeed I see the evidence and I also see the promises of God. We want to appreciate the worship team. Thank you so much. Good Lord bless you. Even as you see the evidence in your life and the goodness of the Lord promised to you. Your past. I know when I say that your past can be a giant, some of you wonder. Past, be a giant. But that's what we're going to look to because your past can be a giant and can be scary. And we'll be looking at the children of Israel, more so from the book of Ezra, and uh, a lot of scriptures from the book of Kings, First Kings and Second Chronicles. We'll be looking at some of those uh, areas so that we can learn. This will be a practical illustration of what we mean that your past can halt you and can cause you not progress to where the Lord wants you to be. Ezra 3 verse 10 to 13 from the King James, it says this. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their prayer with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asphar, with the cymbals, to praise the Lord, according to the ordinance of King David of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endured it forever towards Israel. And I think Israel there could be towards Kimani or towards you. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They're, they're just laying the foundation. But they were so excited about the foundation. Verse 12. But many of the priests and the Levites and heads of the father's house, old men like Bishop Kemani and a few of us, who had seen the first temple or the first glory, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet, and I want to be in the yet, many shouted aloud for joy. Verse number 13. So that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy, from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. Oh, my prayer would be that when I come to shout in praise, it will overwhelm my weeping. And that's what happened in this scripture. A little background at this time is like 70 Long years have passed. Because the people of Israel were conquered. They have been kept now in Babylon because Babylon defeated them. Persia this time is the world power. And Jews, many of which are now quite prosperous in the land of their captivity, are living far from home, the home that they once knew. Which is now a land that is in waste, because of the destruction that are taken place. About two to three million Jews now are living in the world, the known world then. And less than 50,000... Re- They would have to face the giant of their sinful past. So that's the background. About 50,000 of them go back, and what meets their eyes is the destruction of Jerusalem, 
and the temple that is in ruins. Your past has a way of showing up. Sometimes it shows up in the wrong places. Oh, I like the fact that all of us have a past. I know some of your past, you brag with it. You're proud with your past. I know some of you, your past, you don't want to remember anyway. There are some things that in the past you don't want even to mention. But the past, to some was good and to some was bad. But whether good or bad, the past can be disastrous to you if you dwell on it. The past can be a giant that intimidates you. The past can be a giant that every time you see it, you get into some depression of a kind. And that's why you have to conquer your past. You have to face the giant of your past so that you can enjoy your present and hope for your future. Past. And you know Paul helps us a little bit to understand this. Because Paul goes to a place and he's giving his own biography. And he says, I'm a Jew. Really? You know, some of you Kikuyu, proud Kikuyus and Kamba and the Luos and so on. When you're trying to say me, pure. Paul says, I'm pure. I'm a pure Jew. I'm not only a pure Jew uh, in terms of the law. I got circumstances when I was eight days old. In terms of being zealous, I was zealous. I was a Pharisee. I got my training and a man that was God called Gamaliel. That's the CV of this man. But he gets to a place, he says, forgetting my past. That past. I want to look to my future, standing from where I am. I have a couple of points that I want to share with you. And point number one that I want to bring to you is this. The past. Face it honestly. Be honest. Be honest. Before the Zedekiah could lead in this great rebuilding effort, they had to face the reality of their past. They had both good and bad past. Their glorious past had provided for the building of the wonderful temple that was built by Solomon, filled with the glory of God. However, their notorious past had brought the condemnation of the Almighty God which brought captivity of the nation and the destruction of Jerusalem and finally the temple of God. You have to face it honestly. Look at it well and judge yourself well. When you look at your glorious past, my brother, my sister, or when I look at my glorious past, you know I have some glorious past. Some of my glorious past is passing Standard seven. Whoa. Looks like a giant, but I did. Fantastic, isn't it? But in primary, one of my worst moments was when I was expelled from primary. So I have some good and bad. Some good when I would score in the team. Those were good, glorious moments. And all of us have good, glorious moments when you crammed for a paper and everything you crammed came into the exam and you passed like uh, somebody had leaked the exam for you. Oh, my goodness. Or when you went to a trip in Nairobi with a Fanta and have loaf of bread so that after you see the Nairobi International Show, lunchtime, you're going to enjoy yourself with a half loaf of bread and a Fanta Soda. Looking forward. Glorious moment. And glorious moment also happened to the children of Israel in 1 Kings 7 and verse 51. So was ended all the work that King Solomon had made for the house. And the Lord of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated. Even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasure of the house of the Lord. 1 Kings 8 and verse 5 to 6. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled with him 
before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Verse 6. Then, and the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. Wonderful things are happening. First Kings 8, verse 10 and 11. And it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Wonderful feeling, verse 11. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. What a glorious moment. Miracles happening left, right, and center. First Kings 8, 22 and 23. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee. There is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth below. Nobody like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. What a glorious moment that was. What we are saying is that look at your past. Be honest. What a way of looking at the glorious past to the children of Israel. That there was one time the glory of the Lord filled the temple. What glorious moment. But they had a notorious past. Notorious past. Number one, the wickedness of Ahab. First Kings 16 and 30. And, Ah and Ahab, the son of Umri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. First Kings 21, verse 25 to 26. But there was no, none like Ahab, which did sell himself to the work of wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Verse 26. And he behaved very abominably abominably in following idols according to all that the Amorites had done whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It appears that we have many today who sell themselves to the work of wickedness just like Ahab did in those days. Look at your past, glorious past, and notorious, don't miss anything. Then we have Manasseh's weak, 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 weak past. Second Kings 21, 10 to 12. And the Lord spoke by his servant, the prophet, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has done this abominations, he has acted more wickedly than all the Amorites who are before him, and has also made Judah sin with his idols. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whoever hears of it, both his ears will take, yani, utasikia kitu, of what God is promising to do. Second Kings 21 verse 16, Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood, very, very innocent blood. Till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Besides his sin by which he made Judah sin in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Beside that, he brought bloodshed into Israel. Notorious past. But the children of Israel, here they are, they have to look for both. The glorious past and the notorious past. How about Zedekiah in his time? Wickedness and finally the destruction of Jerusalem. Zedekiah was a puppet king. His name was originally Mataniah. Nebuchadnezzar changed it to Zedekiah. And in the ninth year of the reign, he rebelled and he would not listen to the voice of the prophet Jeremiah. Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Jerusalem. In 2 Chronicles, that is 6, 14 to 17, 
and 2 Chronicles 36, 19 to 20, this is what the Bible says in those portions. Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgress more and more according to all the abomination of the nations and defile the house of the Lord which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophet until the wrath of the Lord arose against the people till there was no remedy. Therefore, he brought against them the king of Chalidians who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on young men or virgin. On, on, the, on the aged or the weak, he gave them all into his hand. This is what is happening. Verse 19 and 20. Then they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all his palaces with fire and destroyed all his precious possessions. Verse 20. And those who escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. We are reminded that the denier of God and the denial of his principles always results in bondage then and in bondage now. It results in hush or getting into a hush master then and even now. But we have to face it. Deal with your past. How bad it was or how glorious it was. No, I was thinking today as I thought about this. Some of your past my friends, and you want to go back. I don't know whether you mean it. When you lament, oh, it used to be so good. You know, I was thinking about, oh, yes, it used to be so good, but the houses were made of mud and thrashed by grass. Ah, it was so good. Oh, I remember, yes, we would build those houses in two days. Yeah, quick. So when a young man is circumcised today, two days, he has a new house. But it is made of hallelujah. Teams, some teams to make sure the, the mud is mixed well. Another team to make sure there's water coming to where the soil is. Another team to carry the mud into some guys that were ready to fix it. And the guys fixing it. And they would fix it. There are many people, they would come, but the community would come. I don't want to lament and go back there. No. I want to face it. It was glorious then. If you deal honestly with your past, then the second point, the present, you will face it with obedience. You will be obedient to the present. Me, I don't like my past. But I learned a lot from my past. Some of my past were wow, so wicked. I was even wondering the day before yesterday, I was talking to someone. We were conversing. And I was telling them that I used to sell capsules. Capsules, the ones I used to sell, later on I discovered they were antibiotics. But as the doctor selling, I would tell the people that this will cure everything. And people believed. Just like some of you believe antibiotics cures everything. But you know it doesn't. And the more you take them, the more your body, you kill some of the soldiers that help you to fight out. And you define the cell. And as I would, I would, I would, Sinivizuri <laughs> could confess. And then you are selling three for one shilling. But by the time you, you have sold, umetoa ingine moja. Kwa hiyo umemuzia mbiri mbiri. Very quick. Ata haoni, alafu na mfungia. Wizi. Hiyo ni wizi. Very notorious of my past. 
But I also said I had some good very moment. But let me tell you this. My past, good or bad, 2021 cannot help me, but I can learn and pass the exam that was then so that I don't repeat it at 2021. Because there are some of you who are repeating the sins because you failed then. There are two people that knew what to do exactly. Yeshua, the high priest, and Zerubbabel, the leader of the exile. He led the people to do what needed to be done immediately. There are some things that you and I want to face in the present, but you will need to obey God. Obedience to God. Ezra 3 and verse 2. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Zadok, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltel, and his brethren arose and built the altar of, the, of God, of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. The first thing, my brother, my sister, after dealing honestly with your past, obey the present, but start with an altar. It is critical. Build an altar first. A place you can go for prayer. A place you can take your family for cover. A place that you can take yourself and even the nation of Kenya. The altar. And I thank God for you that have joined our 24-7 prayer that we have been praying. We are making sure the altar has fire burning 24-7. That is the best place to start in obedience. They repaired the altar before they built the temple. Why? Because worship must always come first. Look at your present. The giant of the past, deal with it honestly. But in your present, obediently, start with worship. They were saying, Lord, we want a relationship with you before we restore our religious ways with you. The first place for you and I to start is where you are telling God, my relationship with you is better first than in my religious life with you. The book of Nehemiah, if you can read it, which follows Ezra in the timeline of the Jews' history, you can read it so that you can see what came first so that they can rebuild the walls. Even before the crucial protection of the city was to be put in place, the first thing they restored was the altar. Your past can linger more if you don't have an altar. That giant will keep on terrorizing you. You need an altar. A place of worship. Before you can begin to restore the walls of your protection from the past. Before you, you say no, no, no to sin. You have to begin by a place where if you connect well. It's going to give you victory over your past. What is worship? Worship is to bow down. We bow down before as a demonstration of another's superiority. We bow down. We bow down before God and we have to do it willingly. Psalms 86 verse 9, O nation whom thou hast made, shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. And worship, friends, begins with me humbling myself. Solomon demonstrated humility in his worship to God at the dedication of the temple. As you dedicate your altar today, humility, the most powerful man in the world bowed down and humbled himself before others and before God. You know, I will never forget what I saw in Moi International Sports Center. When the commander-in-chief of this country and his deputy knelt down to be prayed and bowed out at the God of the heavens. Some of the things that we have gone through is because of that act. And even today, 
I'm calling on the Kenyans. Let's bow before him. The king of kings and the lord of lords. Let's bow before him. We want to beat Corona. Let's bow before him. Let's make altars that have been broken. In our homes. In our churches. In our businesses. Let's build those altars. First Kings 8 and 54. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying. All his prayer and supplication unto the Lord. He arose from before the altar of the Lord. From kneeling on his knees. With his hands spread up to heaven. You go down. But when you come up. You are victorious. You go down weak. When you come up. You are a soldier of the Lord. Yes. Let's bow before him. And when we rise up. We will have the strength to fight the enemy. Humility is an old English word that comes from worth, sheep. It means to ascribe worth. It means to ascribe value to something, to someone. So worship means that we ascribe proper value or worthy to God. Hallelujah. Genesis 22, if you like, verse number 5. And Abraham said to his young men, abide here. With us, and I and the Lord will go yoda and worship Him and ascribe worthiness to the Lord, and then I will come. And you can tell the story. When he bowed and he was ready to slaughter his son, he left the mountain victorious because he built an altar of the Lord there. Abraham worshipped God because he valued God more than anything else. I think that's what I'm saying to you. Your past. Glorious or notorious, build an altar, value God, and you pass that giant, you bring it down. Be obediently face your present. Obediently face your present. Because we have a present. If you want to face the giant of your past, then obediently face your present. Stop placing insignificant worth of your, on yourself, significant worth on your past. Stop placing those things even on your future prospect. There are some of you that are so crazy about the future that you're for forgetting where you stand right now. Place your worship on the one who is worthy of all your attention. Is it then not very interesting that many of us worship our past rather than obey, obey, obey worshiping the God of our present. Psalms 27 and verse number 4, one thing that I have decided of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. That's a desire. The past was gone. It was done with it is unchangeable. But now the people of the Lord said with David, we want to dwell now in the house of the Lord. To obey in the present requires an honest worship of God instead of ourselves. Your past, deal with it. Somebody wrote a poem and it goes like this. Out of the night that covers me, black as the peat from pole to pole, I thank whatever God may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winched nor cried aloud under the bulging of chance. My head is bloody but unbored. Behold, this place of wrath and tears looms before the hour of a shade, and yet the madness of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with the punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. That's a point. But how different is this form of the words from David as he prayed? Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayers. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. 
That's Psalm 61 verse 1 to 4. For thou hast been a shelter of me and a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the, co in the covert of thy wings. The difference is, the guy in the poem says, I will not cry. I will not bow. I will not be afraid. I'm the captain of my soul. Now, I think that is where a lot of our challenge is. If you are the central focus of your life, you will do whatever you want to do. Whatever you feel like doing. But if God is the central focus of your life, you will do what you should be doing. Oh, are you, did you get it? Or you missed it? If you are the focus of your life, your life, you will do whatever you want to. Yes, you will. Whatever you feel like. But if God is the focus, you will do what you should be doing. And my cry is, would you be doing what you ought to be doing by obeying the Lord and serving him? And that is forgetting the past, that demon of the past, and dealing with your present. Get your Bible and read it. Stop saying, I just can't go past the reading of the Bible. Get out and start praying. Get out and do something for the King of Kings. Do something today. When it is still called, today there is salvation for you. There is healing for you. There is provision for you. When it is still called, today. Present. How about the future? You know, some of us also live in the future, but we are not moving an inch. Oh, my future will be okay. Remember, I finished by saying do something because God blesses the labors of our hands. So future, how do I do it? Accept it with grace or gratefully. Be grateful about the future. Ezra 3, 10 to 13. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priest in their a prayer with the trumpets, and the Levites and the son of Asa with the cymbals to praise the Lord according to the ordinance of King David of Israel. Verse number 11. And they sang responsively, and they could do praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his must endure us forever, towards you, towards Kimani, towards myself. I have in my praise, I have to give thanks to the Lord, I have to know, and I have to be responsible about what I'm saying intentionally and focused because he is good for you. Remember where we're saying, yes, look for the evidence of the goodness of the Lord and you will find it. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Build an altar for your future. Look unto the Lord who is good. Accept it. Gratefully, my future, I'm going to accept it. You know, some of the future that is coming to some of us, you and I, watching from wherever you're watching, is that we are growing old. Hallelujah, accept it. <laughs> Grateful. Don't, 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 don't keep on lamenting when you are 20. Oh, when I was 20. I thank God. And I accept what is happening gratefully. But you know what is happening? It, it scares some of us. You start bending without knowing. You start walking like uh, you are so careful. Lifting one leg after the other. Not that you are so careful, but there's some pain somewhere. And uh, you, you walk nicely. I have, I've, I have heard of people in church who come later to ask me, are you okay? Because sometimes you feel like you don't want to walk very far from the rail that you can hold on to. As if I'm going to fall in the time. But that's not true. I'm not. Gratefully, let's look at the future gratefully. I want to quickly try to conclude what I'm saying because I have an, um, a few minutes. Stop lamenting the way things used to be. Certainly, you can be thankful for your history, but don't live there. 
Because the past can become a giant for you today. You will have to live ungratefully for what God is currently doing if you look at the past, whether big or small. But Zechariah 4.10 says, For who has despised the day of small beginnings? Small things are happening. Whatever God is doing, it is to be seen in the marvelous of our eyes. There are those today who are so fond of the great revivals of the past, like Jimmy Kimani and others, the Guerrilla Movement, the Park Road Fellowship, the churches that we went to worship in. You know, we have those feelings of uh, Nairobi Pentecostal Church. We have those feelings of Karioko Deliverance Church. We have those feelings of the Komba Pepha Church. Those revivals, great meetings happening in Uhuru. But you know what, Uhuru Park, you know what? That was good then. God give us revival again. We'll not dwell there. Let's do it again. I, I wish there was some wonderful place called the land of beginning again. Where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all our poor self, self grief could be dropped like a shabby old coat at the door and never be put again. I wish there was. Are you dealing with a giant from the past? Whether your past is stuttered or stained, all is brilliant and commendable. Yesterday is forever closed to your influence. It cannot be changed. It is closed. God is at work today. And your submission to his immediate plans will influence your tomorrow. Yes. No, things are not like they used to be. But they don't have to be. Did you fail in the past? You don't have to fail today. Worship God. Did you succeed in the past? Then you can live in your success and learn something from your past. Let's worship him today. Let's get the evidence of what God has done. The goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, there's no place where we can drop our past. But we can deal with our past honestly and look at our present obediently so that we can do what we have called us to do and we can appreciate the future or look at it with grateful hearts. And that's our prayer. And I pray for everyone listening to me that has the past lingering on, that they will stand today and say, you passed, I hung you on the cross, and you have no power over me. Even when we remember it, we have to remind the past, the blood of Jesus has cleansed us and made us whole. I want to pray that God will give you that gratefulness of walking towards your future with confidence. But as you do so, look at where you stand and in obedience, in obedience to the Lord, deal with your pr present situation and God will give you victory to overcome your past, that giant of the past. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord give you his favor. Do whatever you find your hands to do, do with grateful heart. In Jesus' name.